NTV Wild Talk in partnership with the Kenya Wildlife Service and Wildlife Direct. Hello and welcome to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Coming to you from the Indian Ocean here in Watamu in the county of Kilifi. And we're here thanks to Safari Link Aviation that flew us over and also to Medina Palms that are accommodating us. Now this show is all about turtles, magnificent animals that belong right here in the ocean. But did you know that in Watamu there exists a turtle hospital. Yes, a place that actually treats, rescues and rehabilitates turtles and then releases them back into the wild where they belong. I'm about to find out what exactly they do. So now I am at the Turtle Rehabilitation Center here at the Local Ocean Trust in Watamu. And with me is Casper. He is the manager of the trust. Great to have you with us. Welcome to NTV Wild Talk. Thank you very much. Now, this pretty much, Casper, is a hospital for sick and injured turtles. I mean, that is pretty fascinating because one might wonder why, why, why for turtles? Tell us what happens here. Uh, well, we come across a lot of turtles in our line of work every day and uh, some of them are injured, some of them are sick. Uh, when we find one of these sort of turtles, uh, we bring them here and we patch them up, make sure that everything is honky-dory with them and then we put them back out to sea. And actually we're working on a, on a number of turtles at the moment, so do you want to come and have a look? Of course! I mean, I've never been to a turtle hospital before. Alright, so we're just <laughs> going to dip our feet in this uh, antiseptic uh, foot dip. Oh, okay. Because we are entering a hospital zone, which is in effect uh, just like a people's hospital, wow. so we want to make sure that we bring no no germs in from the outside. So this really is serious business. It's not just a joke. It is a serious institution. Absolutely. It's actually the only one of its kind in Eastern Africa. Um, and uh, well, here we have one of our first pa patients. Oh my <laughs> gosh, this is huge. Here, let me just get this rope out of the way so you can have a better look. So, oh, I need a closer look. I mean, this is magnificent. It is a beautiful, huge turtle. And you know what, Casper, I didn't realize that turtles can get this big. <laughs> Oh, so yes, so, so she's, a, she's a green turtle. We've named her, aptly named her Big Mama. <laughs> okay. And um, this is pretty much about as big as they get, but they do get a little bit bigger still. She currently weighs about 105 kilos, uh, but they've been known to grow up to about 150 kilos, actually. So oh. they still get a little bit bigger than this. Uh, she's a female because she's full grown and you can see, well, you cannot see her tail. So oh. it's a very easy way to actually determine whether a turtle's a male or a female once they're full grown. Oh, wow whether you can see their tails. So the males have a very long tail and the females have a short little stubby one. So it's very easy to see. You know, I'm, I'm so tempted, but I'll ask you first. <laughs> am I allowed to touch her? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. So because we are in a hospital zone, uh, we have to treat all of these animals with a lot of respect and a lot of care. And also, um, they are sick. So yeah. it's not necessarily that they'll make us sick, but it's more that we might make them more sick than they already are. I see. So what kind of a turtle is <laughs> Big Mama? And really, why is she here? She's just coming to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Big Mama. <laughs> yeah, no, she's actually very, very inquisitive, this turtle. So she's a green turtle and she's been with us already for the past three months. Uh, she was actually found washed up on the beach here in Watamu, inside the Marine National Park. Hello. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Why, sorry, why does she come up like that? Uh, well, because they breathe air. Oh. Uh, wow. So, although they spend most of their time underwater and living in the ocean and everything, they're still a reptile, like, um, you know, like a snake yeah, or a lizard yeah. or a land tortoise. How can you differentiate a turtle and a tortoise? Because they look pretty much the same, don't they? They are, well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's four sort of leg things sticking <laughs> yeah. out and there's a hard big sort of shell to it but they are quite different um, so these guys have been completely uh, they've completely adapted to life in the water so as you can see they don't have little feet that they walk on but mm -hmm. they've got these flippers they'll propel themselves through the water with their front flippers wow. she's doing it right on cue yeah. well, well done <laughs> uh, and sh they actually use their rear flippers mm -hmm. as rudders so to make turns but also to go up and down in the water oh. Um, their eyes have actually also com completely adapted to life underwater, so they see well underwater, but they're actually, when they're above water, 
because of refraction difference between the wa water and the air, mm. they're actually uh, short-sighted. Oh, when okay. Above water. So she could do with a pair of specs then. Yeah, when absolutely. <laughs> when and she's out of the water. interesting thing is as well because red light from the sun um, is absorbed by water very quickly. Above, uh, or sea turtles are actually blind to red light. Oh. So. If you shine on them with a white light, it will actually blind them, but a red light, they wouldn't even be able to see it at all. Oh, that is so fascinating. I mean, she is really beautiful, but tell us more about why she is in this pool right now. So, Big Mama was found washed up on the beach in the Watamo Marine National Park, um, and as we, well, she was presumed dead, but as we approached her, she actually lifted her head and took a breath, and um, so there was a little bit of life left in her still. So we brought her back here and slowly, slowly started to um, figure out what was wrong with her. Um, tube fed her some food first, um, and, uh, uh, or some uh, laxative first actually. Because when we brought her back here, we actually found that she was floating, as you can see now. Yeah, she is, because um, she's just sort of, you know, on the surface of the water, Correct, isn't she? yeah, exactly. So, and she's supposed to be sitting on the bottom, or if she would want to, she should be able to go and just sit on the bottom of the pool. Yeah. Um, which means that she's got some gas trapped in, inside her body somewhere that she can't get rid of. Um, so we first uh, thought that it was uh, an intestinal blockage. Mm -hmm. Sea turtles, when they eat something that they're not supposed to eat, and usually it's something plastics yeah. or polystyrene or something along those lines, it will block up their intestines. And as they're eating more and more and more, that all piles up, gas starts to develop, and that gets in, uh, trapped inside their bodies, which co gives them a positive buoyancy, and that means that they cannot dive anymore, which yeah. means they won't be able to reach the seagrass or their other food, okay. which means they effectively starve. Really? So that's really so quite sad. if she was just uh, left alone in the ocean and you didn't find her, chances are she would be dead by now. She would have been dead quite some time ago, absolutely. Yeah, oh for sure. Oh my goodness. So how long do we expect Big Mama to be in here for? When might you release her? <sighs> We're not quite sure. She's uh, unfortunately, she's, uh, oh, she's wow. a very difficult case. Um, usually, uh, w usually it is an intestinal blockage mm -hmm. and a serious amount of laxatives will then get everything moving right. and everything <laughs> will come out, which uh, all of a sudden one day we come back into the turtle rehabilitation center and we find the turtle sitting on the bottom of the pool, which means that, you know, everything is fine and she can be released. With her, unfortunately, that's not been the case. So what what we're trying to figure out now is why this gas is still trapped inside her. And once we've got that figured out, then uh, we'll be able to, to come up with a plan on how to uh, get, her, get her out. But I mean, the point and, and the, the, the mission of our rehabilitation center here is to get them out as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean, because really they, they belong out into the ocean. <laughs> Oh, wow, how amazing. And that down there is actually her food, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, correct. So this is seagrass that we've collected and uh, we've tied it together with, uh, with some small palm fronds and then uh, tied it to a brick, mm -hmm. concrete block, and then it's sunk to the bottom so that she can uh, try and dive down as much as possible and really use her muscles and try and exercise. And it's also, turtles become bored <laughs> when they're in a tank like this. I they can really imagine, do, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you have to introduce things that are new and interesting and that sort of thing, because for turtles, it holds very true. A healthy mind leads to a healthier body. Wow. So we have to entertain them a little bit <laughs> sure. as well, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately. It's a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> all right. Well, Big Mama, we wish you all the very best and, you know, hope that you, you get down there a bit deeper yeah. <laughs> sooner Soon, rather than later. Yeah. Well, Should we have a look at the next one? Yeah, you actually have more than one species Correct. here. Uh, let's have a look at them. So the next one is, um, is uh, this loggerhead turtle that we've got in this tank. Oh, my. Another massive one. She's, yeah, she's quite a big one as well but still not fully grown this is what we'd call a sub adult okay. so she's getting to the point where uh, she probably have reached sexual maturity but it's very difficult to tell uh, how old the turtle actually is really? there's no structure in a sea turtle that can actually accurately tell you how old they are um, so how do you even estimate that exactly it's very very difficult the thing is as well because they're reptiles the, s the more food they have the faster they can grow mm -hmm. but if they have very little food they reserve all their energy for for their bodily processes but not for growth mm -hmm. so a turtle that is twice this size 
could be the same age, roughly really? speaking. I mean, not strictly speaking yeah. like that, but I mean, they could be much bigger and still be the same age. And what's this one's name? Uh, we haven't actually given this one a name ah, yet. She's okay. only been with us for just over a day. Um, so this one was uh, actually came to us um, through our bycatch release program. Okay. It was um, caught as bycatch by one of the fishermen from Watamu. Mm -hmm. And uh, they called us up and we went to rescue it from them. And the reason we've had it in here is that you can see some of these these marks on a carapace. So the shell is actually officially called the carapace. Carapace, okay. Yeah. Um, so they've got these burrowing barnacles that are sitting inside the shell yeah. uh, and she's been placed in fresh water just for um, a day mm -hmm. and that will actually kill off the barnacles uh, and that sort of thing. Which and for those who don't know, what is a barnacle? Okay, well here, let me let me show you. We've got some here that have come up earlier okay. that, um, that, uh, that have died. Mm -hmm. So this is, you may have seen these on, on, on pictures or whatever. So this is actually a small creature, it's called a barnacle. It's actually a small animal that builds its own little house and you can actually see the mouth of the animal just inside there. Yeah. And these things attach themselves to any sort of surface, whether it's a, a wall or a boat mm -hmm. or in this case a turtle. Yeah. Um, and they're actually filter feeders, so their little arm will come out of that little hole mm -hmm. and they'll grab stuff and then pull them in. So these barnacles don't actually hurt these turtles physically, okay. um, but it slows them down because there's more resistance as they're swimming through the water. Right. So it's actually, although it's not terrible for them, mm -hmm. it's also better to, to not to have, have them. To have them off, okay. So uh, because they're saltwater animals, we place a turtle in fresh water, which is almost like a spa treatment for the <laughs> oh turtle, nice. so they don't really mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it kills off the barnacles and they come right off. So it's, uh, oh And right. then once they've come off, the turtle goes back back into the ocean. Okay, and of course you can also see the difference between this one and um, Big Mama because yeah. this turtle is at the bottom of exactly. the pool, whereas Big Mama was floating. Yeah, and, yeah. and so you can also see compared to uh, the green turtles that this one is aptly named loggerhead mm -hmm. because they have a big huge fat head. And that is the name of a species. Correct, okay. yeah, yeah, correct. And they have slightly thinner um, uh, front flippers. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same sort of thing but it looks quite different. It's okay. like you have difference with uh, with different types of antelope and that sort of thing. You know? Sure. It's roughly the same animal but they are quite different. Okay, so well do you have any more? The one yeah. more to go, okay. yeah, in yet another species. Oh wow. So this is Lily. Okay, hello and Lily. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see she's behaving very well because she's floating around in the water or swimming around in the water just as she should. Oh, she looks so beautiful, but of course so much smaller than the yeah, others. Yeah, so she, she really is a little baby. And what species is Lily? So she's a hawksbill turtle. Okay. Um, so these guys are considered globally to be critically endangered, really? uh, which means that there are not really not very many left of them. Uh, the estimates of world population are that 92 to 93 percent of the world population has been uh, has died out in the last, well, say 30 to 40 years, uh, mainly because they are killed for their, I mean, you can see how beautiful the, the, the scales and the yeah. scoots are on the back, right? Yeah. So anything made out of tortoise shell mm. is made from these turtles. Oh. So combs, earrings, bracelets, uh, sunglasses, yeah. frames, that sort of thing, they'll be made from, log or from uh, hawksbill turtles. Oh. Oh my which goodness me. The trade for these is now globally um, illegal, but unfortunately there's still quite a high demand in the black market for these turtles, which is quite sad. So she's going to come so up and take a little breath. So <laughs> their numbers really are declining yeah. around the world. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So for each one of these that we have in here, each single each single individual animal counts. I mean, even for Big Mama as well. Yeah. Um, so green turtles are considered to be endangered. Mm -hmm. Uh, loggerheads are in critically endangered mm -hmm. in the northern Indian Ocean, so where we are. Yeah. Uh, and these poor little guys are all over the world, they're critically endangered. There are really, really not many left of them. And which is why Watamu and Mida Creek, which is just behind us yeah. here, are so important. Uh, because we get a lot of hawksbill turtles here. And then most of them are this size to a little bit bigger. So Mida Creek and the Watamu Marine National Park are mm -hmm. what's known as a stepping stone habitat, whereby it's almost like uh, like high school for turtles. Okay. <laughs> so they spend their, uh, you know, they, they, the turtles lay eggs, yeah. the eggs hatch, then they, in their first 10 years, they spend their lives out at the open, open ocean, far, far away from land. Yeah. But when they get to about this size, maybe a little bit smaller, they come to areas like Mida Creek, mm -hmm. Otamu Marine National Park, um, 
and they spend the next sort of 10, 15 years growing to adulthood in these sort of habitats oh and environments wow. here. So without mangrove forests and lagoons and seagrass beds yeah. like we have in these areas, that critical link going from baby to adult, mm. they, they need, and it, that'll be gone. Yeah. So, you know, so kids need to go to high school. Of <laughs> course, they certainly do. And why is Lily here? I mean, she looks like she's absolutely fine swimming along, but what's, what's her injury or yeah. illness? So she was, um, she was again also brought in through our bycatch release program. Uh, she was found by a fisherman floating at the surface and hardly moving at all. Um, so we then had a look at her and assessed her and found that she had a big wound on her shoulder. Okay. You can might just about see it if you look. It's just on this side. Right. It's kind of tricky to see. Yeah, I can see a yeah. little hole there. No, though, she's yeah. raising up. Hello. Hello, she's Lily. Behaving very well. <laughs> and um, that's actually a wound from a spear gun injury. So somebody intentionally tried to shoot and kill this turtle. Um, so. She was quite lucky. Uh, the wound is into the bone and into the muscle, mm. but it didn't go into the body cavity. So she has been in here for just over a week now. We just want to make sure that the wound is healing up properly mm -hmm. uh, and that the muscle isn't damaged too bad. But as you can see, but she's moving her front flipper yeah, very nicely. But had you left her in the ocean, uh, then what? Because what sort of treatment has she received here? So we've given her uh, multivitamin and antibiotics. Oh, really? And betadine as well. You know, oh, it's just, you know, just like a little human being. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean. No, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they're definitely, they're not uh, the same medicines that we would give to ourselves. Uh, it's right. a reptilian physiology, so okay. it's really quite uh, quite different. So you have to know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, it's a wound, so you have to make sure you keep it clean <laughs> and sure. antiseptic and all that sort of thing. <laughs> the usual. All right, so we'll see a little bit more of Lily later, but what else do you have going on here at the center? Okay, so this is a, an area that we've allocated to show visitors what sort of impacts um, there are on turtles in the world but especially also uh, along the Kenyan coast uh, so we explain to people that plastics when turtles eat a piece of plastic they cannot regurgitate it their physiology doesn't allow it, them to get rid of throw it throw it out or <laughs> ingest it exactly but I mean it, it gets stuck inside their intestines as well so one piece of plastic for a small turtle such as you can see down here oh that yeah. if that little turtle eats that plastic that would kill it and really, so the ocean is littered full, with full, full of this of this stuff. Oh this picture no. was actually taken here, here, uh, not too far away from here. So plastics really are a major threat. Really to are, yeah. Turtle survival. All right, and Absolutely. what else? Plastics and pollution. So we've of got uh, general pollution. So plastics, of course, are a part of pollution as well. But yeah. this is uh, this sign focuses on uh, water pollution. So especially nutrients that are. Um, uh, that are coming from sewage or from fertilizers, they cause a certain disease to break out in turtles, which, especially in green turtles here, it's called fibropapillomatosis. Wow. And these awful tumors start growing on their soft tissues. Oh, so that, that is a tumor? Exactly, that is actually growing out of its eye. It's oh really, no. really quite sad. It won't kill them outright, yeah. but they go blind and they effectively starve to death, which is really quite horrible. Oh um, my goodness, coastal me. development is a big, big problem in, in uh, well, all over the world uh, yeah. at the moment. Uh, the lights from turtle, from 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 houses and hotels and discos and mm. clubs and bars and whatever on the beachfront, on the beachfront, confuse turtles and instead of crawling back to the sea because they're used to going towards the brightest light yeah. that they can see, which naturally speaking is a reflection from the moon, the moon. on the water. Yeah. So they're heading to the brightest light, and if that happens to be somebody's pool light, mm. then they'll end up in your swimming pool ah, and that sort okay, of thing. Uh, and there's a lot of destruction of the of the areas that are very important to turtles for nesting and that sort of thing, yeah. which is which is causing huge problems all over the place. Yeah. Poaching is a big problem. Um, there are very heavy penalties uh, for poaching uh, in Kenya at the moment. Um, it unfortunately it does still happen. What is the fine? Uh, so at the moment, uh, the fine for poaching any species of turtle mm -hmm. is 20 million Kenya shillings wow. and or life imprisonment. So pretty much the same kind of fine As if you poach an elephant. Or, or a rhino, yeah. yeah, absolutely. They're at the same level of protection, oh which they should be because 
yeah. a critically endangered hawksbill turtle is just as endangered or even more endangered than an elephant is. Really? Yeah. And yeah. what are the two other species of turtles? So in total we have five species of sea turtles in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the green turtle, loggerhead turtle and the hawksbill. Yes. And the ones that we haven't seen here are the olive ridley mm -hmm. and then the leatherback turtle. Okay. So uh, the leatherback turtles are the huge, huge, huge ones which are also very, very rare in, uh, in Kenyan waters. And they usually spend most of their time far, far away from the coast. Right. Uh, Olive Ridley's we do get here quite regularly and every once in a while one comes up to nest as well so that's quite exciting. Oh, okay. So and then I also see that you've got fishing nets Fishing nets is a, is a big threat to turtles as well. They <laughs> accidentally get trapped and, and wrapped up into mm -hmm. fishing nets. As you've seen, they need to breathe yeah. air. Yeah. They don't have gills or anything like that. So if they're wrapped up in a fishing net, they can't get to the surface to breathe, which means that they drown. So. Wow. And that's where we've got a, a big bycatch release program that uh, that deals with that uh, that impact All and right, well minimizes that. We but we'll get to that later. We'll find out <laughs> much more about that later on. But first, before we take a quick break, tell us, Casper, something very exciting is about to happen. Absolutely. So the loggerhead that we saw earlier in the tank yeah. uh, is actually ready for release. Really? So she's finished her spa treatment. All the barnacles <laughs> have come off, and we can uh, we'll get her ready and get her prepped uh, and then into the car and then we'll take her down to the beach and put her back into the oh ocean. Oh my god, I am so excited about that and no doubt she is very oh, thrilled absolutely. too. She'll yeah, be yeah, yeah. really, really happy. Yeah. All right, so let's witness how you're going to transport her from here to there. All right, we'll do it. And then just turn around, George, go that way. Look. Alright, Smiti, do you want to give us a hand? Okay. We have to fold the head for covering the head. Yeah, there we go. Strapped in, safe and secure. Don't you bite my arm. So that's uh, iodine, iodine, whatever you want to call it, and then this is a standard um, livestock tag, but made of a titanium alloy, so they don't rust. And it's got a unique unique number with KEL for Kenya. This is one around slightly or right. Right. Yeah. Ready? One, two. Yeah. You're right. Mm, Samuel. Stuff, just to make sure she doesn't crawl up. Okay, good stuff. Also, when we're carrying it later, Very just to have the, the rag to the oh, side, but just kind of stand it. by, right? Just to make it better for them to feel. Ready? One, two. You ready? Yeah. One, two, and up. I'm going to put this over her head because otherwise she's going to keep moving about. There we go. All right.
Welcome back to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Now, we have successfully managed to bring this turtle from the Turtle Rescue Centre here to the beach where he or she is about <laughs> to be released. And I've taken the liberty of naming this wild one. I think that's a very good name because this thing is struggling and she's very, very much ready to go back into the ocean. Yeah, so. I can imagine. But tell us, now that she's here, what can we expect? Uh, so we're going to lift her up with the four of us. We've each got a strap. We'll walk her down towards the sea uh, and then we'll place her a couple of meters away from, uh, from the water. Uh, then we'll undo the harness and she will just crawl back into the ocean and she will probably rock it off like a Formula oh, One car. Wow, really where she belongs. So let's get, um, let's get on with it because we really right. don't want to keep her here this long. She is eager to get out. Uh Quite a while. Just, yeah, well, a couple of days, but yeah. she's very keen to get back, I'm sure. Just let us know if you need a break, all right? <laughs> I'm good, she needs okay. to get out. Good. Oh, God. Uh, she can put her straight out here, it's deep yeah. enough, huh? Almost there. You right? Yep, I'm good. Right. Okay, I think this will do. Okay, so let's... I know you want to go, but <laughs> not All right, yet. And just to remind our viewers that this is actually the turtle that had those little... The barnacles, the yeah, barnacles exactly. The barnacles on them here. Yeah, so you can see that... Close up They're now. actually, they're, well, the burrowing ones, the animals actually come out, and the ones that were at the back. So, for instance, here you can see where the barnacle used to be. Yeah. And it's all, uh, all taken care of. All right, and then as I said, I noticed these yeah. tags. Um, it looks a little bit painful, but what is that for? <laughs> so these are um, standard type uh, tags for livestock. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, a unique code on them, so each turtle is uniquely identifiable for research purposes. Uh, it, it's, it's like getting your ear pierced, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's not great, but it's not horribly painful. Okay. So as you can see, she flinched when we put them in, yeah. but she's quite all right now. And do so. you tag every single turtle that you rescue? Yeah, we tag every single turtle that comes through our center or through our programs, and we've tagged more than 7,000 turtles now. Wow. Uh, the most amazing one is that was one that was tagged here in Watamu, and then was found on the Chagos Archipelago, 3,700 kilometers away from here. They then tracked her from Chagos all the way back to Tanzania and she's now back in Watango. Oh, amazing. She did a round trip of more than 8,000 kilometers. Oh, that is Absolutely incredible. incredible. All right. So, guys, let's just make sure that her flippers are out and of the of way. And of course, Fakiri here and Samuel are very heavily involved in, in the process as well. In yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, no. All right, amazing. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. All right, wild one. She's ready to go. <laughs> It's still here. So really that turtle release was incredible. Something that I've never witnessed before and it made me almost just a little bit emotional. <laughs> it was as That's if, you know, that tur turtle had like a sense of freedom. What does it do to you and mean to you? Oh, uh, a lot. Um, I mean, this turtle, this particular turtle, wasn't uh, brought to us in a really bad way. 
Um, so, but it's always good to see them go. Don't get me wrong. But it's especially the ones like uh, uh, like Little Lily, the uh, the small hawksbill that we've got in the rehabilitation centre. The ones that have come with us to us with a real injury or a real disease or something that's that's. When you finally get to let them go and you see them crawling off and you can actually, I mean, you know, you can't see an emotion in a turtle, obviously, yeah. but you, you almost see that they're so happy to be able to get back and it's, it's quite special. It really is. And I love that bit when, well, Wild One, as I named yeah, it, sort well, of yeah. kept running towards the water, looking up, running a little bit more, almost as if like, this is where I belong. And really this entire setting, this ocean behind us, is its natural habitat. Absolutely, yeah. This, I mean, this is where they belong, and this is the perfect habitat for, for, for turtles like that. You've got a beautiful shallow lagoon with seagrass, coral reef nearby, a wide diversity of different types of food that they can get to, shelter for them, you know, this is where they belong. And is Wild One going to be safe, Casper? Where, where is she heading off to? Well, that's, that's a very good question. I mean, she... We get loggerheads around the Kenyan coast all the time, but we find that in certain times of the year, especially around July and August, we get most of them. So there seems to be some kind of migratory pattern, but we don't actually know. There's a lot of things about sea turtles that we don't actually know. Um, so whether she's going to hang out here or maybe she's moving off to a place far, far away, yeah. we don't really know. But fingers crossed she'll be safe and she'll get to where she needs to be. All right, well, we wish her all the very best. She must be out there somewhere yeah, yeah, meeting yeah, yeah. all her other, you know, sea friends. Now you actually have another little yeah. surprise for us because as we came along, Lily was also with us Correct, uh, yeah. in, in your vehicle. Yeah. What's happening with Lily? So uh, Lily's doing really well. She will be released back into the wild in the next few days, but we're just taking her out on sea baths at the moment. Just sea baths, is that literally like a bath in the sea? It is literally like a bath in the sea, <laughs> okay. yeah, for the turtle. So okay. we are going to be taking the turtle out for a little swim. Uh, she'll be on a lead uh -huh. uh, and we can hold on to her. And we're going to just see how she's swimming. Is her wound causing her any problems? Is she able to dive properly? Does she display behavior like a natural proper turtle should? Wow. So is she looking for food and that sort of thing? And if she is, then tomorrow or the day after we can just set her free. So really, checking all those little things are very critical before Absolutely. you actually release a turtle. Absolutely. It's the final stage of the rehabilitation process for us. And it actually means that we don't release turtles unless they're absolutely ready. Because otherwise they're maybe too weak or they can't fend for themselves or feed. Right. And then they'll get into all sorts of trouble. Okay. So, but these will be the last <laughs> couple of steps. All right. Well, here's another surprise. I'm going in too yeah, for that yes, sea Because <laughs> um, I really want to witness what it's going to be like. All right. Uh, so we're about to do that in just a moment. Yeah, you want to? Oh, can you? Would you get the audio? Yeah, no. Yeah, it's because her, her joint in here is quite thick. Uh, so it, it sits. Yeah. So it's like tying your shoelace. <laughs> and there we go, turtle on a string. Awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. Then, uh, so this goes on the left side then, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, it should be fine. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it should.
that and yes she did do really well and that wasn't just exercise for Lily. I've got to say <laughs> me too. Be sure to tune in next week on NTV Wild Talk as Lily finally gets released back into the ocean. Go for it. Okay. She's very ready to go. <laughs> Alright, right there is good, Samuel. And we witness the amazing miracle of baby turtles hatching. It's a rare lifetime experience. So much to look forward to in next week's episode. But for now, it's time for our wild guess question. List the five species of turtles found within Kenyan waters. List the five species of turtles found within Kenyan waters. To participate, just like the NTV Wild Facebook page. Only answers posted on the timeline post that's associated with this question will be considered. The first person to answer correctly wins two SafariLink return air tickets from Nairobi to Vipingo, which means you'll have the chance to visit the local ocean trust in Watamu and see the turtles for yourself. It's just a short drive away from Vipingo. The winner also gets free entry for four people and a vehicle to any national park of their choice, courtesy of the KWS. One bottle of wine, courtesy of Wines of the World, and a gift hamper, courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply. Last week's lucky winner was Jean Arunga. And here's our Wild Pick segment. This is a snap of Evanson Karayuki in the Savo East National Park. He says he was on a de-snaring mission with the Kenya Wildlife Service to remove snares by bushmeat poachers. Evanson says he has a passion for saving wildlife from snares. And then at the Acacia Camp at the Swara Plains in Arthi River, this is Jean Gishuhi. He was taking a break from biking in the wild and says that biking in the wild gives him a true feeling of being closer to nature and it's environmentally friendly. At Mamba Village, Eric Weme was being brave and holding a baby crocodile. Eric says he has a love for nature and local tourism. James Finch and friends were in Olpegeta. They were posing next to Baraka, the blind black rhino, on the left of the page. James says they went because they were excited about being tourists in their own country and it's the most magical place he's ever been to. Also in Old Pejita Conservancy is Francis Washira. He was looking out at an elephant in the background while on a game drive. And Francis says he loves nature and says, Thank you, NTV Wild, for enlightening us on why we need to conserve for future generations. Please do send us your photos that demonstrate your love for nature. Just like our NTV Wild Facebook page, please send in your photos that demonstrate your love for nature and the environment. Just like our NTV Wild Facebook page, send a photo via private message including your full name. Tell us where the photo was taken, what you were doing and why. And now here's what's coming up on the NTV Wild documentary series on Saturday night. It's early morning and I'm headed for Voy, but this time it's a tiny new arrival who I'm going to see. She was rescued late last night. Her mother was killed by poachers, but this is no place for a tiny baby. She's got to get on an aeroplane and go to Nairobi. Up here in Nairobi, she'll be guaranteed a warm welcome from this very friendly little gang of elephants. Each of the young Ellies here gets two bottles of warm milk every three hours. This is the other fussy eater. They're the two smallest elephants. And what they do is they drink behind this blanket. But there is actually a very, very good reason. This is sort of like a, the mother's like, stomach, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's like the feet of the mother. Edwin is so pleased with Tuli's progress that they've been brought back to the stables to greet their new little sister. Now she has a new loving family of people and baby elephants. Isn't it incredible to see and learn how much care and effort is being put in to save our turtles? Well, we may not have the chance to see turtles often enough, but they really are a critical part of the marine ecosystem. This is where they belong and we must protect them. 
That's it on NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Thanks very much for watching and thanks to Safari Link Aviation for flying us out here and also to Medina Palms Hotel for accommodating us. See you again next Tuesday at 10 p.m. You can always do your part to help protect turtles too by spreading information, raising awareness or donating to the local Ocean Trust. Follow the organization via social media on at Local Ocean Trust and get more information on www.watamuturtles.com. <laughs> this mic doesn't look like it's poking out. NTV Wild Talk in partnership with the Kenya Wildlife Service and Wildlife Direct.